You found me in the womb. You work so wonderful. You know me, Lord. You know me, Lord. A song for me you wrote. Life's journey to explore. You know it all. You know it all. If I rise on wings of dawn, on the depths of seas I fall. By your gracious love I'm found. You're my ever-present God. How precious are your thoughts, O、oh、God? I could never comprehend. You who know me inside out. You're my ever-present God. You know. Discern my every thought. You search me, Lord. You search me, Lord. You know all of my ways and everything I say. You see it all. You see it all. If I. Seas I fall by your gracious love I'm found. You're my ever-present God. How precious are your thoughts, O、oh、God? I could never comprehend. You know me inside out. You're my ever-present. Never comprehend. You know me inside out. You're my ever-present God. Search me, oh God. You know all of my ways. Remove any evil in me. How precious are your thoughts, O、oh、God? I could never comprehend. You who know me inside out, you're my ever-present God. Hi there! We're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app.、Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore, and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Why miracles, healings, and deliverance? Why is this important? Because miracles, healings, and deliverance—they reveal the reality and the nature of God. God doesn't love just believers; He loves the whole world. The blind see, the deaf hear, the dumb speak, the lame walk, 
the dead are raised the poor have the gospel preached to them God's intent is for every believer to work the supernatural so we need to get back to evangelism the way Jesus did it greetings thank you so much for tuning in to living strong today it's our joy and privilege to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God and also in prayer. And we appreciate you for tuning in and uh, being a part of this uh, journey where we bring God's Word to you and are able to minister to you. Uh, and we appreciate those of you who write to us. Let us know that you're watching. Let us know how these programs are ministering to you. We've been talking about the supernatural through you and uh, this, in this last message in this series, uh, we want to just uh, bring that truth that we've shared over the last few weeks uh, and just bring it in a way that you can apply it and you can begin to step out on this. Uh, what we have said in our earlier programs, uh, first of all, is that the Lord Jesus desires for the supernatural, uh, the power of God to be displayed through his people, through each and every one of uh, us as his believers. He wants his power to be uh, revealed through us through healings and miracles and deliverances and, and, and the works of God taking place through our lives. Uh, we uh, established that as we saw uh, various things through the Gospels. We saw how Jesus uh, commissioned the 12 apostles, how he commissioned the 70 disciples. Uh, we talked about the John 14, 12 mandate where Jesus said that all who believe in him will do the works he did and even greater works. Uh, we then talked about the Great Commission, how in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and also in Acts, uh, whenever the Great Commission is mentioned, uh, it is packaged or it is accompanied uh, with the demonstration of God's power uh, in supernatural works. Uh, we also mentioned about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are available for every believer. Then in the second program in this series, uh, The Supernatural Through You, uh, we we identified or we mentioned three reasons why every believer can expect to uh, have God's works released through his or her life. First of all, we talked about the authority that is vested, uh, given to us uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. That every believer has a right to use the name of Jesus. And in fact, we do. Uh, and uh, that we need to understand the significance uh, of that right that has been given to us, the delegated authority that's vested in us as believers. When Jesus Christ uh, gave us the right to use his name, uh, that authority can be exercised by every believer. Secondly, we talked about the power of the Holy Spirit that is available for every believer so that the Spirit of God works through each of us uh, to reveal the works of God. And thirdly, we talked about sonship glory uh, where Jesus Christ has uh, given to us the same glory that he walked on the earth as the only begotten Son of the Father. And so we as sons and daughters of God are able to manifest sonship glory. And one of the ways that sonship glory is displayed or is manifested is through the miracles, healings, deliverances that take place through our lives. On this program today, as we try to bring this, as we bring this series to a close on the supernatural through you, I want to just share some practical things that you, uh, that we can start doing so that we can actually begin to see the works of God taking place. It is one thing to understand this theologically, to understand that this is what the Bible is saying, but it's totally another thing to step out there and, and, and start doing it, uh, start serving people, start ministering to people, start reaching out to people and expecting the power of God to be displayed as you minister to them. So I want to share with us simple practical steps just to get started. Uh, if, you've been, uh, if you are a believer, who has already been uh, out there praying for people to be healed, for people to be delivered, for miracles to take place in the lives of people. That's great. I just want to encourage you to keep on doing that and keep asking God to use you in a more powerful way so that people's needs can be met, lives can be changed, and Jesus can be glorified. But I'm trying now to address uh, those of us uh, who may not be so comfortable. Maybe we've never stepped out uh, and expected God to use us uh, in supernatural ways. And so I want to address this message to 
uh, such believers and just to encourage you, uh, to motivate you, to inspire you to take your first steps um, and to begin to see God work through you uh, in doing mighty things. So I want to leave you with three simple steps. First of all, is always be motivated by love. You know, what is it going to take for us to see the sick healed, uh, to see people delivered from demonic powers, for God to work miracles in their lives? You know, people are going through all kinds of situations and circumstances. Some are in deep financial problems. Some are in deep emotional problems. Some are going through uh, various other struggles in life. And God wants to help them. God wants to be God in their lives. And we are God's instruments to bring God's power uh, into their lives. What's, what's it going to take for us to be used by God? First of all, I want to say this, that we need to be motivated by love. Be moved by love towards the people that you want to minister to, that you're ministering to. You know, we see in Matthew, the 14th chapter and the 14th verse, it says that when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. See, you see how compassion moved him into action uh, to bring healing to those who were sick. Uh, we see numerous examples in the Gospels. But the Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion and then he did great things. And so I want to present that to us. Be moved with love for that person. Try to look at that person. How does God see that person? What is God's heart for that person? It only takes a moment to make that change. That when you see somebody, you just ask yourself, God, what do you see in this person? How do you want, what do you desire for this person? So you begin to capture the love of God. You begin to flow in the love of God towards that person that you want to minister to or the people or the group of people that you want to minister to. Always be motivated by love. And remember the Bible teaches us in Galatians 5 and verse 6 that in Christ Jesus it's not about circumcision or uncircumcision but faith working through love. So faith works through love. And as we minister, of course, we're going to minister by faith or because we have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So, but faith works through love. So love is what draws that faith out of our hearts or for the people. So whether you're going to, about to minister to somebody who is sick or when you're about to minister to somebody who is troubled or oppressed by uh, demonic powers, uh, uh, be motivated by love. It's the love of God that will draw faith out of your heart to minister to that person. So that's the first thing, is just to start out by loving them. Just a simple prayer in your heart saying, God, what is it that you want to do for them? God, I just want to be moved with your compassion for them. So the next thing is this, second simple step is to desire for the works of God to be manifested through you. You know, we must have a desire saying, God, I want you to heal the sick through my life. I want you to deliver the oppressed. I want you to work miracles in the lives of people, to have a desire for the works of God to be released through you. And you know, having such a desire is not wrong because your, your motivation is, I want to see God glorified and I want to see people helped. You know, there are, there are so many things that people are going through uh, where they need help and, and God is more than able to minister to them. But I need to be available in the hands of God. I need to desire the works of God to be released through me. Same thing with you. you. You desire saying, God, I want your works to be manifested through me. So uh, that's the next step to have a desire. God, I want to see this person healed. God, I want to see this person delivered. God, I want to see this person totally set free. If you're talking to somebody who is bound in drugs and addictions and all of those kinds of things that have ruined their lives. You know, first, be moved by love towards them. Secondly, say, God, I want to see this person free. I want to see these chains broken off their lives. Just have a picture of how they will be uh, if the power of God touches them and the power of God sets them free. Uh, how wonderful their lives will be, how free they will be, uh, and they'll be able to enjoy life. So desire for the works of God to be manifested through you. You know, the Bible tells us in John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39, the Lord Jesus said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, out of his innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. And then verse 39, the Bible says, But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, 
for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So here the Bible is saying, Jesus is saying that those of us who believe in him, out of our innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And this, this rivers of living water that he's talking about is the, is the presence and power of the Holy Spirit released through us. So Jesus himself has, has set this up for every believer to be a conduit, to be a channel of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit literally is waiting to be released out through us. He's waiting for his presence and power to be released out of our innermost being. But many of us believers, we just want, we just hold it back. It's like, sorry, Holy Spirit, you have to stay inside me. There's no way out. No, that's not what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to be released out. He wants to flow out of our being. And so when you and I desire for the works of God to be released through our lives, we are desiring exactly what Jesus desired for us as believers, for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to be released through us so that other people can be blessed. So you have a strong desire for the works of God to be manifested through you. And in any situation, at any place, any time, you may be, you know, out shopping somewhere and you meet somebody who has a need. Right then, right there, you can pray for that person. You be moved with compassion for that person. And you say, God, right here, do something for them. You know, you don't have to say, come home or you know, come for a Sunday service. I mean, all that is fine, but why not right now? Why not right there? The Holy Spirit is in you and He can flow through you to meet their need right there and right at that moment. So desire for the works of God to be released through your life. And the third simple uh, key I would share with us is step out in faith. So first, uh, be moved with love towards the person, or towards, towards the people. Number two, you desire for the works of God to be released through you. And number three, you've got to step out in faith. That means you offer to minister to that person and then do it. You lay hands on the person. You take authority over that sickness and the disease. Or you take authority over those demonic spirits that have been oppressing that person. Or you begin to, you know, you speak for God's intervention in their lives. You begin to speak miracles for them. You know, so you, you have to st- take the step out in faith. You know, when the disciples of Jesus uh, were ministering to the lunatic, uh, to the father who brought a son who was lunatic and troubled by demons, and uh, the disciples failed. They couldn't do, any, uh, do anything to help. Uh, they asked the Lord, Lord, why couldn't we cast this demon out? And Jesus responded saying, because of your unbelief, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will command this mountain to be moved and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. That's in Matthew 17 and verse 20. So Jesus was pointing out the fact that they needed to have faith in order to minister deliverance. They needed to have faith in order to minister the works of God. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. You, you and I just need to step out in faith. We believe that God will work through us. We believe in the authority that's been given to us in the name of Jesus We believe the power that's in that name. Uh, We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit that will flow out through us. But now we need to step out in faith. So like I said earlier, wherever, at any time of day, any day of the week, when you meet somebody with a need, you just say, look, can I pray for you? Can I uh, help you? Can I just uh, speak in your life? Can I uh, ask God to help you? So you offer to pray. And then you take a step out in faith. You pray for them. You pray for their healing. You pray for their deliverance or whatever miracle that's needed in their life. You ask God, God, do this miracle for them. If they need a job, you pray and say, God, bring a job into their lives. So you, you're re- taking the step out in faith and the miracles will follow those who believe. If the signs and wonders will follow those who believe, is what Jesus said. Now, as a believer, you've got to act your faith. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 5, The Apostle Paul wrote, He who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The answer there is obvious. It's by faith. So in in, in releasing the work of the Spirit and in causing miracles to take take place, we do it by faith. And you know, faith is spelled R-I-S-K, risk. So every time you want to step out in faith, you've got to be willing to take a risk. 
That means you're stepping out into something that is unknown, something that is not, uh, uh, your five senses can't figure it out. But that's when you're stepping out in faith, you're taking a risk, but yet you're depending on God and his word. Just follow the example of Jesus. Uh, just imitate Jesus as you see him in the gospels. You know how Jesus ministered to the sick. We do the same thing, just minister the same way. He laid hands, he rebuked the sickness, he, he spoke into people's lives, he commanded the demons to leave. So we just minister just the same way. Just follow the example of Jesus and do the same thing. And as you're ministering, as, you're, as, as a believer who's been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you desire for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be released through you. You say, Lord, let gifts of healings flow. Let the workings of miracles flow. God, give me words of knowledge. God, give me words of wisdom. God, give me a prophecy for this person. So you desire for the gifts of the Spirit to be released through you as you minister to people. So remember, the Lord Jesus wants the supernatural to be released through you. Uh, as young as you are, as old as you are, whoever you are, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, He wants to work miracles through you. And when you and I uh, are able to manifest the works of God, people have an encounter with God. They encounter Jesus Christ. When they come face to face with a miracle, when they come face to face with a healing or a deliverance, they come face to face with a manifestation of God. And it, it reveals to them God loves them, God cares about them, and uh, they, you know, can, their faith in God is going to be strengthened when they see the works of God. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications, The Father's Love, Baptism in the Holy Spirit, and Gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are available for free. These resources are ideal for personal study, for use in small groups, churches, and ministries. You can download them at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org. I trust you enjoyed the program today and that you are encouraged and you are inspired to step out and, and be a channel of God's healing power and miracle working power and delivering power to those around you. God wants to use you. He's waiting for you to move, to take the step. And as you, by faith, move out and minister to people, you will see God do mighty things through your life. The supernatural will take place through you, through every believer, because that is what Jesus wants through each of us. Before we close, I want to pray together. I want to pray right now for those who are listening, who need a miracle in their lives. Uh, even as I pray a simple prayer, I'm expecting God to touch you. I'm expecting the power of God to touch you right where you are so that you can receive healings and miracles and deliverances in your life. And I pray also that God will stir you up that you will become a channel of His miracle working power to other people around you. Let's pray. Father, for everyone who are listening, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the power of God touch them. Let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon them. Let every yoke of the enemy be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let bondages and oppressions be broken. Let every demonic spirit be expelled and cast out of their minds and bodies. And I release your healing. I release miracles in the circumstances and situations. Let every oppression be gone. And Lord, let them experience your touch and let your name be glorified. I pray that those listening God would be moved to step out and see the miracles of God taking place through their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We are in a crucial time in history where the urgency to fulfill God's mandate of reaching souls and making disciples has never been greater and more urgent. For this, we're getting ready to scale up and build APC World Outreach and Equipping Center. This will serve as an equipping center and a missions base using state-of-the-art technology to train, equip, release, and support ministers across our nation and across the globe. 
In phase one of this project, our goal is to acquire approximately five to six acres of land. That's the first step. In phase two, we are going to set up our Bible college and a media center. In phase three, we will be building our sanctuary where our church family can come together, be trained, equipped, nurtured, and cared for. To make this vision happen, we need your partnership. We know that this is going to take some amount of sacrifice, but remember, every investment you make today will reap great rewards for the Kingdom of God in the near future. You can go to our church website, apcwo.org slash build to impact page and get information on how to make your contribution or make your pledge of what you will be able to give in the months to come. We look forward to your support and prayer. We want to thank you in advance for what you will do to see this vision happen. Together, let's build to impact. Imagine a world without the Psalmist, a world without David. We would have lost out on so many of those experiences that these men of God had. Each of them talks about you know, their unique life experience and their testimony, their, their life struggles, their, their faith and their victories and their battles. These songs are already written, but, um, but now they get to be expounded in a way that it embodies each songwriter's heart and their life story. For me, what was amazing was this recurring theme of God's love that is, you know, weaved through all these songs and um, talks about God's unfailing love, His untiring love. Uh, he's an ever-present God and His love is just so much better than life itself. As I was, you know, producing these songs and working on the music, each day just sitting and listening to these life-giving words of, you know, my rock, my tower, my shelter. You know, there's no better way, I think, that I can spend my day. You're my ever-present God.